this is Matthew Butler and we are going to go over how to get this project off the ground and running in case you need some help. So when you open this up you're gonna see this uh, layout right here. You got the tutorial watching right now and then you just go down the line. One, two, three, four. And then the audio file obviously. So let's just open up the first one, the logo and you'll see right away it's just the Envato logo and uh, you can just delete that and then just bring in your own text or logo so we got some text here and then you go to type create outlines and you're all set you just go command s to save it you want to save it as the same file and then this pop-up window comes up and you want to make sure it's in Illustrator 8 format and then click OK. And then if you're bringing in a logo, I'll just put, paste in my logo and we got a little funkiness going on here. Uh, let's see here, these are not attached and this is not attached. Okay, so we got my logo in there now too. And let's just shrink that down. There we go. And delete this TM here. Okay, so we got the my logo in here and we got some text for the example. Save that again. And then we'll hop back over here and you'll see we're going to number two. Now number two is a little tricky. If you're just using like text or if you have like a solid color, like my logo right now is just a solid color, um, you don't need to do step two. But if you have more than one color, if you want the exact color from your logo, if you have gradients, if you have two or three colors for your logo or text or whatever you're doing, you're going to want to do the step two. So open up step two, which is logo converted. You're going to want to delete the um, sample text right there. Go back to number one. You want to copy everything, and then you want to paste it in place, which is Command F on the Mac. And now that it's in place, basically you're going to want to make a junk mat to display your um, your colors correctly because in 3D space it's going to be displaying this jagged edge right along the a right along basically everything it's going to have this jagged edge which makes it very dirty looking so you just want to make you know an outline and that's all you need to do and then for this um, this you could either scale it up right here which is what I'm gonna do And this one it's gonna be a little bit trickier because we have this little point here in the middle so what I'm going to do is just select that point bring it down and then scale that up and that's basically it you can save that one out and it brings up a little warning message for me just because it's a CS3 format and I'm using CS5. Save it out and we hop back over here and we're on to step number three. Open it up and you'll notice right away we have the logo back there and the text that we brought in. But before we get into any of that, we can hop over here, created by Butler M, that's me. Click here for help and there's a little help message that basically comes up. It's just like basically a summary of the Cinema 4D part of this tutorial in case you don't want to watch the tutorial again because you know how boring I could be or something. I don't know. We got the sample logo which we can delete um, in just a little bit which is basically just the um, the Invanto logo that we were using earlier just as a sample and then the controls which controls everything. So you want to go to File, Merge Object, and you want to merge in the 1 logo. Scaling at 1. Flip down this little guy, and we got all these paths. You want to just 
depending on how your logo is, you select them all, connect and delete, and then drag it out of that group, and we should just have the logo. Yep. Perfect. And you want to make sure it is aligned perfectly to where the um, black outline is, because if we hop back into Illustrator, this is exactly where it's going to be displaying on the screen. See that black outline, or the black uh, area right here, it needs to be inside that. The black area right here, it's the same position, so it's being displayed in the same spot. So, um, go to your um, spline that you just brought in, go to Object, make sure Close Spline is checked, very important, and then drag the angle down to zero. Go to controls, controls again, and then just drag in to your spline your new thing. Right off the bat, it looks a little messed up, but if you just click away, you'll notice it jumps right back to where it should be. Okie dokes. So after that, we got colors, colors. So we got all these like random colors here. Um, it kind of goes in order like. This is the first, second, third, fourth, etc. colors that come up, but not all the time. So something that might be, you know, color seven, it might not be like the seventh color that comes up. It just depends on where you are in the animation. So um, you'll want to scrub through it to make sure you got the right colors that you want to use. And then for color 10, that is the last color that's going to be displayed. So if I render out a little region right here it should just be the green color well it's kind of yellowish because of the light but it's a, a green color that's from our illustrator file right here so it's getting pulled from here um, but if you disable this um, in texture which we, re we have been using and just render out a region again you'll notice it is now color 10. So if you just, you know, got your one one single text block or color, whatever it is, that's a lot easier to do and you can skip step two with the um, enlarging of the logo, this one. So continuing on, reflections at the very end, we have reflections here, which uh, you can disable if you want and it will there's a nice little um, reflection going on in the background um, but this can decrease render times quite a bit so that might be an option the only thing that is getting reflected though is this last layer that comes up and reveals the logo so that's something to keep in mind as well and then also we have a bump map that's on all these um, layers here all these uh, different cross sections that come up. So if you want to decrease the render time significantly, you can disable that right there easily. Next up, we want to do two things. One, click this little plus guy, and it'll come up with a bunch of circles, which we will be talking about right now. So go to the beginning, you just want to scrub through the timeline. If you have any problems that you see right away, like messed up text or anything at all or giant um, blocks of lines that come out of nowhere which uh, are not supposed to be there um, hopefully I'll find one um, sorry I'm on my laptop it's uh, going a little slow So you want to step through it frame by frame. Oh, I think I saw one. So you see right there, this brown layer out of nowhere just like takes over half the screen and then disappears, you know. That should not be happening. It's out of nowhere. So we want to figure out which circle that is. It's going to be one of the ones that has the check mark on. So we can just select all these, click the check mark, 
check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. Let's turn on those. Let's go to seven. Okay, seven point one. So basically, to fix this, you can go into the coordinates and just move this a little bit up or move it a little bit down, and then move it a little bit um, in the y or in the x, not in the z direction. Make sure you don't move it in the z direction. So that seemed to fix the problem. Now it's um, actually animating how it's supposed to. It's not popping off out of nowhere. Um, and basically, you want to do that for everything. Every f like um, scrub through your whole animation. Make sure that doesn't happen at all. Because if it does, it's not going to look good when you render it out. So. Um, an easy way to get this to show up for you guys just to show you what it looks like. I'll increase this angle of our um, object that we have right here. Go in here, scrub along. Here seems good. Let's select the circle 1.1 and you see I'm moving where this um, orange line is. Basically if it gets into a weird funky area it's gonna have some odd effects happen which I can't get to happen obviously but if I could get to happen basically you're going to want to just move it in the X and Y just a little bit it doesn't have to be a lot just like a um, one or two points that's all and it'll usually just fix the problem right away so after that um, that's basically everything you need to know. Um, we can go into our render settings now and I'll show you how to decrease your render times if you need to. So right now you can go into output and make sure you got your dimensions correct. So let's say you want to do 1080 or uh, 480 instead, you know, you just change it to whatever you need. I'm staying at 720 though. And then go to save you're going to be saving it as logo and underscore logo and then to if you wanted this to be like the best best quality possible and you have like an awesome ass computer you just bump this up to like 4x by 4x and it will be really really nice but if you got like a you know kind of a slower computer and you don't want to wait like a day to have this render out you can just drop that to 1x by 1x and you could usually you could get away with best but maybe geometry if you're going really quick or something and then also you can turn off ambient occlusion and that'll also decrease your render time significantly so um, that's basically that part of the um, tutorial step three so you want to render out your file click this little guy and it'll render out your file and then we will hop into After Effects. Let's go into Finder and we're on to number four. So once this is rendered out you're going to look the folder is going to look kind of like this. You're going to have a bunch of little logo files in here because those are all the files that you just rendered out. So now hop into After Effects. You click number four. It's going to depending on what version of After Effects you have, you got the little warning message saying this is a um, older version of After Effects so you can just open it up and it brings in your logo nicely um, if you rendered out it at 720 or 780 instead you want to make sure you go to whatever version you rendered it out as and then um, you know Obviously, I'm at 720, but if I open it up in uh, 1080, obviously this doesn't um, position correctly because it's not the correct files. So let's break this guy down. Um, in here, when you bring in your logo, let's say um, the text didn't align. Um, your your logo looks like uh, it's bigger on the X and Y. Here, you want to go to this in the glow and position this to be wherever your logo is. 
um, you want to make sure you just move it in the y direction or I'll move it to the right a little bit but obviously if you move it to the left you're gonna run into problems where you see the glow outline incorrectly so something to keep in mind and then if you go to this red layer that is the black that um, crushes to complete black um, at the very end next file is the beginning brightness which has the bright streak right here in the beginning and then if you didn't want that you can delete it whatever um, and then we're starting on black if you didn't want to start on black you can just delete that layer number 12 and then all these orange files under here those control the little white dot um, animations as you see right here and they're kind of in the middle of them so if you say that's not where my logo is it's right here in the middle you can drag this little guy over here rotate it scale it up whatever you need to do um, and it will scale accordingly then you can uh, go to the next one say my logo is not there it's right here in the middle silly so you can just move it right there whatever you need to do to make it um, really pop um, next layer is the you know final um, logo rendered out uh, you probably don't want to touch that and then below that is the audio if you want to dive even deeper into this project you can click the little shy guy icon and you'll see a bunch of stuff you got like the camera the lights more adjustment layers um, like the curve right here if you need to you know adjust the actual color of your logo you're like oh my color is not supposed to be like that it's supposed to be you know more green or something you can adjust it like that or you could just adjust it actually inside um, the blue layer right here you can change the add a curves layer or whatever and then just change it that way um, let's go back to the shy guy so in here we got a bunch of stuff going on so we got uh, all these first set right here from um, number 13 to number 70 we have the, um, the little white lines these are just the shadows of them and they correspond to the ones below it so 71 through 35 they all are the actual white outlines so you know this group corresponds with these groups and those two groups are hooked up to this null object that you can move around so that's the basic breakdown of how your project works I think that basically describes everything you need to know on this project if you have any questions just shoot me an email through video hive and I'll be sure to check it out so now all you gotta do is render out your project and you're good to go let me know if you have any problems I'll be sure to get back to you thanks a lot this has been Matthew Butler